a simple tool to reduce file size and add frames and a whole ton more. Let's have a look at Graphic Converter for the Mac. Dave Taylor here and I thought it'd be fun to go through some of the basics of how to prepare an image for the web by using Graphic Converter on the Macintosh. So, I have an image here from my friend's company, Hero Muster, and it's pretty big. So we're gonna need to shrink it down, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a small border to it. So let's get started. I'm gonna launch it, and this is Graphic Converter. It is shareware, yes, they still have such things. And you can download a copy from this URL super easy and this is a ridiculously high feature or super powerful software program I've been using for many many years you can do photo editing in it there's a ton of things in fact here let me show you so here's some of the effects it even scrolls off the screen and then there's all these filters you can do things like I often will do blurs on a specific area and it's just kind of crazy. It does layering, and if I bring in, let me actually move the toolbox in, you can see here's the handy shortcuts for all the different features that you have. We, however, are just going to do two things here. We're going to shrink down this image, because as you can see here, 3,000 pixels by 1,900 pixels is a lot bigger than I want when I post it to Twitter or Facebook or Pinterest or anything. And then, once we do that, the graphic's really cool. We're gonna close this. The graphic's really cool, but I'd like to add a very thin black border on the edges, just so when it's posted on social media, it doesn't just sort of blend into the greater um, background. So, first off, resize. And that's easy. Picture, size, scale. And then I'm gonna go ahead and you can see here, that we can do it by percentage, we can do it by pixels. Let's just say we want to have it be a maximum of a thousand pixels. And notice that the height changes commensurately because it's proportional. Now, if I wanted it to distort and fit into a specific height and width, let's say we wanted it to be 500 by a thousand. So now I'll turn off proportional and then we'll go back here. So now we have a thousand by 500. And if we do this, it's gonna look a little weird. Nah, not so good. We're gonna Command Z, and that undoes it. And so we'll go back and we'll go back and actually scale it with proportional sizing. And we're gonna make it, let's see, a thousand pixels made it 32%. Let's just make it 30%. And we'll resize it. And down here, I can make the image I'm looking at just as big as I want. So the view of the image is independent of the size of the image. And down here, you can see that we're getting the pixel dimensions. So now it's 928 by 571. That sounds good. Next up is let's go ahead and add that frame. And this is ridiculously easy. What I want to do is this is foreground color and background color. So I'm going to actually, you know what, let's leave the background color as a sort of rust red. And so here, again, we're going to go to picture, size, and let's see, we're going to add margins. And if we do, let's say we do uh, nine pixels. Now, it's going to be nice and easy. So that looks good. You can see we get the new dimensions here. I click OK, and there's my nine pixel red frame. That's a little bit much, so I can actually bring up that window again, and I can, let's subtract five from each one. And if you look very carefully on the background, there's a red line showing what's gonna happen. Since it's red on red, it's not easy to see, but let's just do that, boom. Now that's looking better, and we're done. So we've resized it, and we've added a border. That's pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna choose Save As, and unlike certain Apple programs, I don't have to do any special secret things to get it to be a, have the Save As feature show up. I don't know why Apple did that. Um, but now we're gonna do app, uh, Hero Muster Smaller. We'll just save that, and we're saving it as a PNG, so that's easy and done. Let's say instead we actually wanted to save it as a JPEG. So now, again, Save As, and this time I'm going to choose JPEG because I want to show you there's a really neat thing that they do. So the, the name works just fine and I'm going to save and now let me move this into the center. Now notice that I can choose the quality of the image and then down here it will show me 
the consequence on size. So if I make it super high, even at 100%, the JPEG compression is going to cut it down a significant amount. But if I wanted to have it be, I don't know, pretty darn ugly, actually. Let's have a really super low resolution. You can see it gets down to 19K. It ain't going to look very good that way. <laughs> so we'll go back. I usually do somewhere around 90, 90 95% because I find that that's indistinguishable from the original. And you can see here that if you know we look at this and there's really no difference between 100% and 90%. So I'm going to do that, and instead of it being 200K, it's now 75K. And I could actually make that even smaller by turning off all the metadata, but we're just going to leave all that because it's just, it's kind of work. So we'll do that, and I'll choose OK, and it's done. Now let's go ahead and hide Graphic Converter and see what we have wrought. So here's our PNG, and here's our JPG. So let's see, and again, I apologize, I have to keep centering things. So there's the JPG at 90%, and then here's the PNG, and here's the original. And the original's huge, so let's go here and let's just look at sizes. So here, uh, Command-I gets you the size, so that's 73K. Here's the original, it's 200K. Let's move maybe both of these over here. And then we'll just bring up this one, and that gets us down to 78K. So actually, the, the JPEG at 90% is slightly larger than the PNG. So there you go. If you're really, really obsessed with having the smallest possible file size, then sometimes it's worthwhile experimenting with different options. Anyway, that's all I got. So Graphic Converter, I am a huge, huge fan of this program. I cannot recommend it enough. And as you can see, it's super powerful, does everything that you could possibly want for graphics editing. I would say it's a legitimate competitor to Photoshop. Yes, I did just say that. <laughs> so I encourage you to check it out. This is Dave Taylor, and I will see you in my next video.